Today, we're going to discuss an intriguing medical case involving a 50-year-old heavy smoker who presented with a persistent cough, weight loss, and weakness in the left upper limb. Upon examination of the patient's face, we noted a series of clinical signs that provided important diagnostic insights. Question 1. What abnormality is evident in the face? Answer 1. We identified signs of Horner syndrome, characterized by ptosis, drooping of the upper eyelid, and meiosis, constricted pupil, in the left eye. This observation prompted further investigation. Question 2. What further clinical sign would you look for in his face? Answer 2. In addition to ptosis and meiosis, we would also examine for anhydrosis, lack of sweating, and signs of superior vena cava, SVC, obstruction, if present. These additional signs can offer valuable clues about the underlying condition. Question 3. What is the composite diagnosis? Answer 3. Based on the clinical manifestations and the observed Horner syndrome, our diagnosis is a pancose tumor. This type of tumor is situated at the lung apex and has encroached upon the C8-T1 nerve roots of the brachial plexus, leading to the characteristic symptoms. Horner syndrome is a complex condition arising from disruption in the sympathetic nerve supply from its origin in the hypothalamus to the eye. It is characterized by meiosis, partial ptosis, and ophthalmus, apparent sunken eye, and anhydrosis. The intricate neural pathways involved comprise first-order, second-order, and third-order neurons. During our examination, we focused on several crucial aspects. 1. Meiosis, the constricted pupil results from impaired sympathetic pupillodilator fibers. Notably, light and accommodation reflexes remain intact, but the pupil might not fully dilate in response to darkness or distance. 2. Ptosis, we assessed partial ptosis, which can be overcome by voluntary upgaze. This unique characteristic is due to the involvement of the levator palpebri superioris and Muller muscle. 3. Enophthalmus. While true enophthalmus is absent, ptosis and narrowing of the palpebral fissure create an illusion of sunken eyes. 4. Anhydrosis. Variable in its presence, anhydrosis, lack of sweating, can provide localizing information. We evaluated this through a simple skin stroking test, comparing both sides for differences. 5. Mnemonic. To remember the components of Horner syndrome, we use the mnemonic sample, which stands for sympathetic chain injury, anhydrosis, meiosis, ptosis, loss of ciliospinal reflex, and ophthalmus. Understanding the most common causes of Horner syndrome based on lesion location is vital for accurate diagnosis. Central, first order issues in the hypothalamus, brainstem, or spinal cord. Preganglionic, second-order conditions affecting the cervical spine, brachial plexus, or pulmonary apical areas. Postganglionic, third-order disorders involving the superior cervical ganglion, internal carotid artery, or skull base. In conclusion, this case highlights the intricate interplay of neural pathways and clinical manifestations in diagnosing Horner syndrome, particularly in the context of a pancose tumor. 
By carefully observing facial signs and considering lesion locations, we can arrive at accurate diagnoses and provide appropriate treatment.